Remedy Entertainment. That's the name of a Finnish video game studio, and if you've been following video games, you may have heard of them from games like Max Payne, Control, or as recent as Alan Wake 2. These games are regarded as cult classics, having received great praise from fans and critics alike, having widespread influence on the industry as a whole, like the slow motion gimmick in the OG Max Payne, or the use of live action in Quantum Break. However, as much as these games are praised and loved, these games aren't the most popular per se, which comes down to one main reason I feel. Their games are weird in the best way possible, completely unique. With their distinct approach to storytelling and use of live action elements in their games, Remedy games end up having this special flair to them, a special emotion. Alan Wake 2, a game that released a few weeks back, although is classified as a survival horror title, does not feel like a survival horror game like Resident Evil 4 or Dead Space Remake from this year. It's a completely different beast of its own. And one of the first factors that makes these games so different, which you'll realize when playing one of their games, is how they look. Remedy games have a very distinct look to them. It's hard to pinpoint what exactly makes their games look different, as they still very much look like video games games should and have some realistic elements to them, but at the same time, they just look so surreal, which isn't just thanks to the art direction of the game, but also in its presentation. Max Payne, a game that released 20 years ago, which does show its age, has an extremely unique way in presenting its story, which it does in the form of a graphic novel. Whenever the story beats take center stage, a cutscene will play where Max Payne himself is seen with text bubbles and other text boxes that describe what is going on in the scene, alongside with Max Payne narrating it all, unless a side character has their own speech. Why it stands out is not just because of how jarring of a difference it is seeing a live action element contrasted with a game that clearly shows its age, but because of how well it fits together. It works, plain and simple. If I think of any game in the same era like Resident Evil 1 a few years before it, or the original Far Cry a few years later, although both games have these serious tones to them, I don't think they would be able to pull off the use of live action and the game at the same time. The presentation of this looks like it really came from a graphic novel, a video game, and a movie all at the same time. But moving away from presentation, let's get into the crazier side of Remedy Games, which is the actual art direction itself. Max Payne, for its time, looks like a normal game, but where Remedy starts to flex their muscles are in the nightmare sections. These sections are trippy, eerie, genuinely horrifying, and just straight up crazy. And ever since then, the creativity in the art department has only improved. In 2019, Remedy released Control, and at the Game Awards the same year, Control won the award for Best Art Direction and it's very clear to see why. Control is a mind-bending experience where the buildings and structures around you are constantly changing shape. It might not sound like much for me just talking about it because it's got to be experienced. Seeing the world change around you, add the incredible sound design that haunts your ears, and the engaging narrative that keeps it all fresh, it's an experience like no other. The red hue that engulfs the screen so many times, creating both horrifying and tension-bringing moments, which also stretches to the enemies as they leave behind a trail of sorts, like they are shifting between two Two different planes. Rooms with not much going on that stretch on and on have this minimalist look that makes it look so desolate and haunting. It's truly remarkable what they've created here and like I mentioned earlier it shows how the creativity in art has only improved which is evident in Control's use of live action. Live action elements are a staple of Remedy games. Live action is a pretty tough medium to implement properly in games because of how much of a contrast it can create with the look of the video game itself. This is why it's not a common element in games, and if games want to make use of live action, the whole game is typically based around it, which we can see for example in Sam Barlow's games like Her Story. Phenomenal game by the way. Remedy however go all the way, making use of live action in really unique ways. Although I've not played Quantum Break, for my my understanding, the live action used after each chapter of the game gives it a sense of believability in a way, and a new way to appreciate the narrative, as being structured like a TV show gives it that cliffhanger feel. And with this alone, comparing it to Max Payne's use of live action in the graphic novels, it's clear to see how much they've evolved since then. But their two most recent titles, Control and Alan Wake 2, use live action in some of the best ways possible by merging it with the gameplay. Both titles make use of live action in what is the best way to call it, a form of silhouettes. These live action pieces will hover over the screen in a way, acting as a transparent layer. These pieces are shot from a static angle but have effects that change to another shot, creating a distorted feeling of what you're seeing. The result, how the player can interpret these live action moments, is pretty varied. They all serve some sort of narrative or thematic purpose. 
For one, the live action could link to the altered world event theme that started in Control, I believe, showing how there are more than two realities at play here, and how at some points they can overlap, and we can see the other side for ourselves. Moreover, more on the storytelling front, it's used as a method to create both suspense and mystery, as the majority of these moments are super cryptic. Yes, they do answer some immediate questions that you might have, but ultimately create a lot more mystery and intrigue. Alan Wake 2 also uses bursts of live action, although heavily filtered versions of it, to present jump scares and to create tension, as you get closer and closer to the Dark Crescent's in the game, I believe. But like Quantum Break before it, both Control and Alan Wake 2 use live action to create TV shows of sorts, which add to the world building of the games. Control has these TV documentaries from Casper Darling, explaining his discoveries and experiments in analyzing the AWEs. And in Alan Wake 2, we have the Coscola Brother commercials, documentaries from a certain someone close to Alan Wake, and from the writer himself. All of these add a layer of realism, high stakes, and at times, comedy to an otherwise dark adventure. With all that said, I think I can now move on to the final part of why Remedy games are so special, which is something that I've been alluding to throughout the whole video, and that is their unrivaled creativity that stretches across all their games. I don't say this lightly when I say that I think that Remedy games are games that push the meaning and concept of creativity to the max. Get it? Max? Max Payne, okay, sorry, bad joke, moving on. Although creativity is a very subjective concept, meaning there's no such thing as an objective creative experience, but if there's an experience that more times than none manages to surprise anyone, those would have to be the games created by Remedy themselves. I don't know how, but there's always some part in their games that just completely surprises me, and I don't think it's because the games are subverting my expectations of what can happen, because it just goes above and beyond. The game already has me surprised at what is already going on, and then adds on more to it. It just keeps going. Take Max Payne for instance. The nightmare sections in it are just completely insane. They are direct juxtaposition to the reality and noir tone that the game has been building up for, but then directly contrasted with a surreal and trippy section that doesn't overstay its welcome, and really adds to the depth and complexity of the character of Max. And don't even get me started on one of the craziest fourth wall breaks ever. Crazy good. Live action is also super creative. I won't talk much about it as the previous section was all about it, but in Alan Wake 2, Mr. Door acting as a talk show host between the dark place and the real world is just trippy and a unique idea. But now, mild spoilers for Remedy games, we have the music sections. If I'm not mistaken, Alan Wake, the first one, featured the first musical number in a Remedy game, and Control and Alan Wake 2 both keep this tradition. But these sections, absolutely out of left field. Not even left field, the moment just comes out from an entirely different galaxy. You literally cannot predict it. In Alan Wake 1, you defeat the Taken as rock music blasts in the background, and in Control, you must go through a maze as a rock music plays. Not sure what words would best describe this emotion, but it's marvelous. Compared to the dark worlds that you're exploring, these musical numbers act as tension-filled gauntlets that both further the narrative and lets the player relax for a while. And don't even get me started on the musical section in Alan Wake 2. Plural. I don't even want to talk about the We Sing chapter because that is literal insanity. 10 out of 10, one of the best moments I've ever had the pleasure of experiencing in a video game. There are so many more elements where you can see the creativity and passion behind these games, like the themes of dark and light leading into the gameplay of Alan Wake, or the phasing through space in Quantum Break, or the bullet time ability in Max Payne, or the cryptic yet sane speech of the board in Control, and so much more. Remedy continuously one-up themselves when they get to the creative drawing board, and I love it. Remedy games are just built different. The art, writing, and the very different approaches to storytelling makes their games stand apart from many other games. But because of these differences, their games haven't always been the most popular per se compared to other titles released. But that's a good thing in a way, I think. Because they don't stick to the norms of conventional storytelling or game design, they have that Remedy approach. And after more than two decades of experience, Alan Wake 2 seems to be the game that finally puts Remedy games in the well-deserved spotlight that they deserve. So, how would I end this? I'll end it off with one thing. Thank you, Remedy, for the wonderful games that you've created, and to you, the viewer, go play Alan Wake 2, because not only will I be making a video about it next week, but it's also a landmark title, one of the most important titles in video games, and one of the best titles released this year. <laughs> With that, 
welcome to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end, and I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, a like means a lot, and a dislike too if you did not enjoy the video. I would like to hear your thoughts on anything Remedy, your favorite games from them, or their favorite moments in those games. And if you want to see more from me, a subscribe comes a long way in helping the channel out. With that said, that's all for me. I'll be going back to gaming. Thanks so much for watching all the way to the end. It really does mean a lot. Have a good rest of your day, night, and week. And with that, Storm out. Oh, <laughs>